Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about the Word Wizard app, which is this one here. Um, I'll just go into it. So this app is really useful uh, when students are practicing uh, any focus words they have to learn for the week, particularly with spelling. Um, we use it in my class uh, on a daily basis. The students have a different word set each week and um, either the students or the teacher can uh, write up a new word list uh, and label it. So it's a really cool app because it sort of takes the idea of the traditional magnetic letters where you would have a, a board and have magnet magnetic letters and be able to bring those letters up and create some words stick them on the fridge for example but the great thing about this app is firstly you don't lose any letters because um, how many people have lost the odd magnetic letter if it's fallen under a desk or a table um, and also it will give you sound so it will actually say the word when you put the letters together which is a really good feedback for students so when you're using the Word Wizard app, initially when you come into it, you're presented with four different options. You've got the Talking Movable Alphabet, Word Practice, Scrambled Letters, and Spelling Quizzes. Um, so these three activities we tend to use during the course of the week to practice our words. This activity here is just where you have the letters at the bottom of the screen and you can bring them up and make um, any words, have a little bit of a play with it, which students quite enjoy um, doing. So if we click onto this app, uh, the option here, and then we're presented with the alphabet at the bottom and I've stuck with the lowercase letters. Um, you've got this option here where it will speak, if it's giving you a word to practice, it will speak the word that you need to do. Um, then you've got delete, which will clear the screen and settings to adjust things like the voice and the speed. So I'm just going to bring bring up a, um, just to see how it can be used. So it says the letter, you can hear it as it brings up the the letter. So it'll say the sound. And then... Ah. K. Uh. K. Okay, so when I click on it... K. It says the word and you can hear that I've actually changed it to Australian accent and if I want to clear it it just goes down to the bottom and then if I want to make another word ah K. T. cat 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 okay I'll clear it again now in the option here with the settings you can go in here so you can change the speed of the voice, which some students like to make it really slow or maybe very fast so it sounds um, a little bit odd, but it's obviously better to keep it um, near towards the middle and the tone of the voice. Here you can choose the voice. And this is where I changed it to the Australian accent. But if you want a female voice, you can choose maybe the UK option I'm not particularly keen on US sounding voices and there's only one Australian option at the moment. So I'll stay, stick with that one. Exceptions, if it pronounces a student's name in a different way, you can adjust it here and change how you want it to be pronounced when it has that word. And then images, you can add a background image rather than having this or you can assign images to words you could put some symbols in if you save them um, into photographs I might do another video a bit later on about um, how you might want to adjust it in that way um, I personally haven't used words and images in this app but you could um, have a symbol or word with the spelling words or focus words they're learning. Um, you can change the colour um, and background to paper if you want to. 
And then at the bottom, you've got more settings. So just these are just more detail settings. So if I click on the tick here, automatically it changes it to the uppercase. As far as I know, you can't toggle between them when you're in um, the movable alphabet or the word practice, which is a little bit frustrating, particularly when the students are either practicing their name and either capital letter at the beginning, or if they're looking at, for example, something like months of the year or days of the week, where you also need a capital letter. It's a little bit trickier. So let's have a look at the more settings. And here you're presented with a lot more detailed options. Um, and you can have time to look through these and see if um, you want to adjust any of these. The one thing I've looked at is um, the profanity remover. Like with anything, a lot of students like to type in some words they maybe shouldn't. Um, so this, it'll, I, think, I believe it works for the whole word, but um, as I found out the other day when one of my students was trying to, one of his words with the word focus, and um, as you start to spell that word, yes, it does come up with something that sounds a little bit more inappropriate. So we just deleted that word from the word list for that week. But um, this will hopefully prevent students from writing any words they shouldn't. So you've got other options here, which you can either tick on or, or take off. And that's in your extended settings. So I'll just click down, I'll leave it as it is. I might change it back to the lowercase. Um, also, when you click down here, you can then toggle to some numbers. And you've got some, oh, and I think I've switched the digraphs off, that's why they didn't come up. So that that, that is also as an option as well. Um, yep, so that's basically the movable alphabet. So it's just where students can just bring letters up and um, have a play with just exploring, making some words. Let's go back to the main page. If you click on the back arrow. Now, what we tend to do um, in my class is we use the word practice and scrambled letters um, for the first few days of the week. And then on Thursday, the students try the spelling quiz before they have their spelling test on Friday. So when going into word practice, um, you're given a couple of op options. The app has built-in lists already, which um, you can choose to use. So some of our CVC words for beginners. Um, you've also got digraphs, 100 most frequently used words, numbers, colours, animals. Um, if we were to click on the numbers, you've got your cardinal numbers and your ordinal numbers. And then if we were going to click on the Dolch words, click on a set, and then it's giving you different lists like this. So I'll go back in. You can choose to use those lists if you prefer. We tend to use this option, which is my lists. And this is where you can create your own lists. And this is where the app is really useful because any app that you can customize for your own use, that's where the real benefit is. So to create your own list, you want to start by clicking on the plus and then giving it a title. Um, so I'm going to call mine term two and I'll call it week seven, which was last week's words. Um, and last week we were looking at plurals, so like you could alternatively call it plurals, or if you want to do things like days of the week, student names, um, you could call it whatever you want to. The important thing to remember when you're adding your words for your list is to use a comma. And there's the example here. Um, so you're not putting a space between each word, so you're just putting a comma. Otherwise, if you do, it does affect the words when they um, come out on the screen for the students to practice. So I mark the words. My students were practicing were these words. So I'll just put them in. And then we had, whoops, let's put a space in, girls. 
James and cakes. I'll put one more in. Usually we have 10. Okay, so I'm just putting five of the words in. We have 10 usually in our list. And then you would click save. And that's your list. And it says it hasn't been practiced. Um, if you wish to share this list with multiple devices, you can export. So you can actually share it between devices. And you can choose this. You can um, send the list to a nearby device. And then on the other device, you would have to click on receive. They both have to be on the same Wi-Fi. I've had mixed outcomes with using that. It's been a bit hit and miss as to whether the list can be opened on the other devices and sometimes I've actually found it quicker just to write the list myself but there is that option of sending the list once you've written it, uh, typed it out just to another device. Um, like I said I've had mixed outcomes with that. So when you've completed your list um, you can either click cancel or you can click on that one to start it. Spell. Bags. Okay, so what you notice first of all with the word practice is the word appears at the top as a visual prompt. We have the letters that will be need, needed for that word at the bottom and the others are all shaded out so the students um, can't choose any of those other letters. Um, the other thing I find a little bit frustrating is that I would prefer if the app forced students to start from the beginning of the word and do the first letter, whereas they can actually just put the, the last letter up. So it would be great if the developer could make a change to that where it forces students to start from the left and move towards the right. But that I guess that you can do that just with observing students and um, just encouraging them to start with the first letter. So the idea B you'll bring the B letters up. Ah. B -A. G. Bag. S bags. And, when, and then when you put this in, it'll have a little um, bags noise and visual. And it will stay like that until the student touches the screen. And Spell. Word. Girls. G. G. Now I did notice in the settings, if you have a student who is unable to drag e. because of e. the fine motor skills, you can do it so that you just uh. touch the letter and it will go up. Uh. G. L. Girl. Oops. Girls. And it's a nice little visual that appears. And some sounds and some birds. Again, you can switch Spell. that off if you don't want that. Games. G. G. A. R. Mm. Game. A. Game. S. Games. I'll just go through to Spell. the last one. Cakes. K. A. K. K. A. K. 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 A. K. K. Oops. S. Cakes. Now that's where you could actually change the sound of the um, the A sound. Spell. You do that in the settings. Nails. Mm. Mm. Ah. No. Eh. No. Nail. Nails. And at the end it will say, well done, words completed. And then they can have a Touch the screen to play. Which you can, you can then make some pretty patterns. Some students like that sensory reward. You might even be able to limit the amount of time they can do that for. We'll just go back to the main page. Um, so my students generally use this as a word practice and then they also use the scrambled letters, which is the next step up. It's a little bit harder. So again, we'll use this list. Spell. Bags. So this time, as you notice, we've lost the alphabet at the bottom and the uh, letters have been mixed up and there's no visual prompt at the top, so a little bit harder. 
students can click on a, a hint button up here. Uh, I have toggled this off sometimes because if you find students are just going to, if they, they're not sure, VG. they don't want to try. So again, that, that comes up. BA. And then if you're getting stuck again, they BA. Can Bag. Use it for a prompt. Bag. And I believe when it does the reports, the user reports, Bags. it will tell whether you've used a hint or not. Spell. Girls. So if I head over. G. G. Girl. Girls. Spell. Games. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go back to the main page. And the last activity is your spelling quiz. Spell. Bags. Now, if you notice, this time we um, only have the audio of the word and we've got the full alphabet. So this way the students would be B expected to bring B up the letters. Ah. B. A. Um, G. Bag. The word. S. Bags. Spell. Girls. And then it will give a report as to how well they've done. Also shows them here uh, which number word they're on out of the five. Something which it could also be used is looking at the user and quiz reports. Um, you can make sure you change the user to different students. So you can change the current user, add new ones. So you can have multiple users along. And then you can view the user report. So these are, well, this is what I've done today. So if I was to click on um, this one here, so it tells me how long I've spent doing the activity and um, the history. It also says I've practiced 100% of the words. Um, and then you've got the scrambled letters as well. So I must say I haven't actually used that really myself. You can export that as well. So you can actually email that as a document. But I haven't used that myself. Um, I think that's probably about it for Word Wizard. But I find it's a really fun app. It does have some of its limitations. As you notice, the way it pronounced the word cakes, you'd have to go into the settings and change that it would say cakes instead of caps. Uh, but that's just um, going through and checking the word list before the students use it. Um, yep, yeah, so um, I'll switch off now and I'll look at the next app which we also use which is called Writing Wizard which is also down here in the corner made by the same app developer.